Okay, hello everyone. I'll wait a, a few seconds to let the the laughter die down here. We all know that I'm not the the most neat person around, uh, and I'm not necessarily proud of this. But uh, I wanted to take some time this afternoon to introduce our very special guest, uh, Dr. Eric Kuhneman here. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, I'd like to do a brief, a very short introduction, and then Eric, our guest, is going to uh, talk a little bit more about his, his himself and his background there. But uh, I feel it, it's very important for me to to set the stage this afternoon uh, with with you and my very good friend Eric Kuhneman there. We have a, a tremendous opportunity this afternoon for you to get to know him, for you to uh, talk with him, and to learn from him. Uh, about his, his very vast experience in, in international ag development there. Eric uh, grew up or was born and grew up in, in Idaho. He received his bachelor's degree from the University of Idaho and then eventually his PhD in plant breeding uh, from Cornell University. He, uh, for the bulk of his professional career, uh, worked internationally. He worked in a number of different countries including Haiti, uh, Colombia, Brazil, and Nigeria, and for about 21 years of his professional career, he worked uh, out of Rome, Italy, at the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, on many, many different uh, international uh, projects and programs and assignments there. Uh, since about 2010, He's worked uh, more, uh, more as an international uh, global consultant. He does lots of program evaluations uh, for different efforts that are underway or literally around the world. And uh, when he retired a few years ago, and he and his partner Judy Fisher, uh, and Judy, I'm not sure if you're there there, but uh, welcome uh, if you, you came along there. Uh, they immediately upon getting back to California uh, looked us up in our conservation ag systems innovation work group there and uh, the two of them have been tremendously important uh, enthusiastic partners in our work group efforts here in California. Uh, I'll, I'll stop there uh, for a minute here with uh, some final thoughts here. Eric uh, is, is just a hugely talented, creative thinker, first of all, and he is just the epitome of, of whatever you could imagine uh, in terms of who you'd want to work with as a partner on any kind of an effort there. I, I, I say that sincerely from the bottom of my heart, and it's absolutely true. Eric is somebody that you, you really want to have working with you. Uh, I can remember, and this is a little bit over the top, and forgive me for this, but when I was a little kid, these were the good old days there, but I, when we lived in Illinois, uh, my parents would put me on the train. It was called the 400 train, and it would leave Chicago, Illinois, and go through Wisconsin and all the way up to the Upper Peninsula, Michigan. And I would ride, I was 10, 12 years old, and it, it, these kind of things wouldn't happen anymore, but <clears throat> at the very last stop, it was the town I was born in, in Ishpeming, Michigan, and at about two o'clock in the morning the conductor of the train would tap me on the shoulder and say hey kid you better get out uh, you know this is the last stop and my grandparents would be there and uh, to, to meet me and they would uh, I would be with them for a few uh, weeks in the summertime for fishing swimming uh, water skiing in the lakes of the upper peninsula of Michigan and I, it, I I recall those days very fondly as you all know there but one of the things that in the little town I was born in they had a, a movie theater and they would show a Wednesday afternoon matinee for a quarter or something like that. And one of the movies I remember seeing as a little kid was called 633, 633 Squadron. And it was a, a story, this is the, the book cover that I actually still have. I think I have that book. But <clears throat> it was about a group of Air Force pilots in World War II. <clears throat> and they were given the job of bombing some German uh, energy station and I don't know the details of it or at least I don't remember but apparently this this energy plant was way up this narrow very narrow fjord with mountains on both sides so the pilots had to maneuver through this very very narrow passage 
and quite literally they had to trust the pilot that was in front of them uh, to the sides of them and behind them with their lives and it was that kind of a, a critical dramatic kind of a uh, manifestation of trust and I I know this is over the top but that kind of trust is the kind that I have in Eric and and it's really been a, a wonderful thing that uh, that he and, and Judy have worked with us in our, our efforts here in California but he's a very good person and I'm glad that you have a chance to meet with him uh, this afternoon he's going to give a little bit more background uh, about his his own career and his work and then he's going to talk about truly one of his, his primary passions and that is the need uh, to really harness the potential of Africa's moist savanna uh, biome there. So I'm going to leave it to you Eric uh, to go into that and students please engage with him throughout the afternoon now, ask questions uh, and, and learn as much as you possibly can. Thank you very much Eric.